Hey YouTubers and welcome back to Tony the Technician channel and today we're going to be going into a mechanic getting into the automotive field but has, having a budget of $1,000. I have a video out soon, actually I've already recorded of a $2,500 budget for somebody getting into the automotive field and that's not including the toolbox so stay tuned for that video. This is going to be a condensed version of that video so this is going to be a $1,000 budget including the toolbox and tools. So it's going to be a tight budget, uh, but we're going to get you as many of those basic hand tools and the tools that you need to be successful when first getting into the automotive field. This is brought to you due to Justin Dow. If you've watched my channel, 98% of you already know who Justin Dow is. Um, great guy, great channel, very knowledgeable, and I'll have his channel linked down in the description for you guys. He created a couple videos of the $1,000 budget as well as you know, going over how he got into the field, the mistakes he made, the, the things that he did that he was happy that he did in the way that he did it. That sounded very confusing. <laughs> but either way, he discusses all of that and then asks, you know, why is it that so many mechanics or people come into the automotive field and spend so much on a toolbox but then cannot fill that toolbox or they do not have the tools necessary to do their job. Um, so this is not going to be for those who just have 10 grand that they can just throw down getting into the field and buy a snap-on box. This is going to be for those on a budget and I'll share with you the brands and tools that I've selected. Obviously it's subjective so if I forget something or you guys think that I missed something that you would consider a basic tool that you would suggest having when first getting into the automotive field, feel free to drop it down in the comments. Also all of these tools that I suggest will be linked down in the description under the tools link for you guys if you guys are interested. All of these are subjective. I have a very specific reason as to why I selected the brands and the tools that I'm going to list. When sticking within a budget, it is very, very important to find a good price, find a good tool brand with a good warranty, tools that are gonna last but have a good warranty, and a key, key thing to remember when on a budget buying tools is look for the deals that is going to get you some things that you might not have been able to get before so look for those good deals and i'll share with you everything here and how we're going to get good deals so a thousand dollars in budget tools a thousand dollars in snap-on tools is not going to get you might be able to change some oil for a thousand dollars through snap-on just saying love snap-on but for a thousand dollars you're not going to go very far with it first up on the list is obviously a tool cart so within this $1,000 budget, you must have a toolbox. Now on a $1,000 budget, you're not gonna be able to get a toolbox. If you do, even a cheap one at Lowe's or Home Depot, you're looking at $500, $800 up into the, the low $1,000 range. So that eats up half of, your, half of your budget right there, if not all of it. So toolbox is out. If toolbox wasn't part of the budget, it wouldn't be so bad. But we're sticking it tight, and so we gotta go with a tool cart. So, obviously, everybody already knows, old reliable, the five drawer tool cart from Harbor Freight. I have it posted right up here. I'm gonna be posting pictures of all the tools that I suggest. So, there's the tool cart that I would be going with if I was on a thousand dollar budget, because it holds a decent amount of tools, it's very versatile, and it's good enough to hold everything I need as a basic starting out automotive technician. That toolbox or tool cart is going to run $240. Next up, a very important tool to have, no matter what part of the auto automotive field you're in, is an impact. So whether you want to go pneumatic air tools or cordless, for our route, we're gonna go pneumatic. It's the only way to save money. If I'm buying cordless, I am not going cheap. I'm going with the things I've always used, either DeWalt or Milwaukee. So I can't let that eat up all of my budget. So as far as this, we're going pneumatic and I chose the Ingersoll Rand. It is a stubby, but it's still got 440 foot pounds of torque, enough to do anything that you're gonna do first starting off until you can grow and afford the Milwaukee, DeWalt, a good name brand cordless tool. Don't go getting Amazon specials of stuff you can't pronounce, having 18 different chargers and 18 different batteries. You don't want that. Stick with a couple different brands and keep it easy, keep it reliable. But for this, it's the Ingersoll Rand. And that is 
$125. Next up, a pick set. Not necessary, very affordable, very cheap. Search it on Amazon. Tecton, you guys know I love Tecton. It's there, they have a small pick set and you could even go up to the gear wrench pick set. It is also a great deal right now. The brand new one is on sale for $20. So I'll have both of those posted up in here. 10 to $20 for those two sets, Tecton or gear wrench. I believe those to be some really good sets for the price. Next up being wrenches. Now you could go out and buy one of those three drawer little toolboxes that include wrenches, sockets, ratchets, bit sockets, all of that. But, and that is a great starter set. Absolutely. But you're going to have to grow up on that pretty quickly because usually those tend to skip a lot of sizes or provide you with a very limited amount because they're trying to cram so much into a set. They tend to skip quite a bit of stuff. So I didn't go completely individual on everything, but as far as the wrenches, I chose Tecton and that is due to the price. There's no fancy open end feature, but I'm not worried about that right now. What I'm worried about is a good quality wrench that's very affordable and I know has a good no hassle warranty. The wrenches are gonna range anywhere from $100 to $130. That's if you wanna stick with just metric for the beginning or if you wanna just go ahead and buy metric and SAE, both available $100 to $130. We're gonna go on the high end as far as our calculations and uh, that'll be in our budget. Next up, after wrenches is going to be quarter inch and three eighths chrome sockets. I wouldn't buy half inch chrome sockets off the start, just do the quarter inch and three eighths. Both I would choose from Tecton. Both of those sets combined are going to run $135. It's going to have your sockets, ratchets, extensions, universal joints. I'm not gonna suggest universal sockets just yet. Universal sockets are a lifesaver in the field, but Starting out on a budget, universal joints. Moving into the half inch drive sockets, that's where I would go impact. So you'll have your quarter inch and three eighths in chrome and half inch in impact. So you'll have all three drive sizes and you can grow from there. If you want half inch chrome later on or three eighths impact later on, go that route. But I suggest uh, half inch in impact to start off with. There I also went Tecton. Uh, with the lifetime warranty, they're very reliable impact sockets. Whether you get the old version or the new version, new version is going to be a little bit more expensive, but keep that in mind. Great sockets for a great price. The bit socket set, because you're going to want bit sockets, Allens and Torx at a minimum. So I've had the Gear Wrench Master uh, 89 piece set or something like that. I'll have it up in here, obviously. I bought it at $90. It is now $120 or $122. That's pretty high, but it's still a great set. I would probably still purchase that. It's one of the most complete, affordable sets available, and I've had very good results with it. So that is very important, the bit sockets. Screwdrivers, I just get a smaller set. A lot of the times I use screwdrivers, it's bit screwdrivers. I use them with my little impact driver. So screwdrivers are few and far between. I don't need every single size out there. It's not necessary. The good thing is Tecton has a lot of USA made screwdrivers and very affordable, two different handle designs, very good prices on both. So you can get a 16 piece set for $60 made in the USA. I'd go to the hard handle or the trilobe. USA made can't go wrong. Pry bars, pry bars are very important. They can also get very expensive, but HyperTuff, Tecton, um, Master Force, a lot of them. So the same Craftsman, they're the ones I have. It's a three piece pry bar set for $36 and it is fantastic. Made in the USA, striking cap, nice thick shafts, very good pry bars, especially for the price. Can't go wrong there. A serpentine belt tool. This is something that Justin Dow mentioned in his uh, $1,000 video and I wouldn't have even thought of that. So I'm glad I watched his video. It was very informative and very, very true. Make sure you get yourself a serpentine belt tool. I chose gear wrench as well. They have two different versions, the standard uh, ratcheting wrench, and then they have a flex head one. Staying on the budget, $50 for this serpentine belt tool. A work light, work lights are very important. So whether you wanna get yourself a flashlight, a headlamp, or just a surface area work light, either way, make sure you get something that works for your needs. It's versatile and a, a good battery 
So make sure it's rechargeable. There's tons of them on Amazon now. It's very easy to find work lights. This is one that I have. It's called the Mantis, I believe. Fantastic little flashlight, holds a good charge, and it's very bright, three different different settings. And then they now have uh, lookalikes of the Astro lights. They have a lot of mimics of those or knockoffs of those for a very affordable price, so you can't go wrong there. Um, they all have a lot of great reviews, so all of these tools will be linked down in the description for you. Last up being hammers. So you're definitely gonna want a hammer or two. You could either go one of two routes. You could get a hammer set off of Amazon that's very cheap, anywhere from $25 to $45, get a, a three-piece to a five-piece set. Now, a lot of those come with sledges, like three different sledges, two different ball pins. I don't need all that. Maybe I need a sledge, a dead blow, and a ball pin dead blow. Ball pin dead blow and dead blow are my two most commonly used hammers. So if you don't wanna buy one of those cheap sets, you can go through Tekton and get their new USA made uh, ball peen dead blow or dead blow. And either way you go, whether you buy the set or the Tekton, each one from Tekton is gonna be around $45 to $50, where the Amazon one is going to be between $35 and $50. Going on the high end of all of those tools that I just named off, it is going to run you $990. So, you have $10 to spare before hitting your absolute max budget. A lot of the tools that I listed and showed you pictures of are obviously from the Tekton website. Now there's one reason I went that way. Not only do I really enjoy Tekton tools and have had good results with them, but with their program, they give you 10% back in rewards. With all of those items I listed, you spent $440 through the Tekton website. That is $44 back in rewards that you can spend on the Tekton website and then you got your $10 that you didn't spend. So you have $54 total, and now you can either buy a flip socket set from Tekton, um, chisels, USA made chisels, more ratchets because maybe you want something long, a long ratchet, maybe something uh, like a flex head. You know, you have $54 there to play with just to get the little odds and ends. So there's, why it's important to look for those deals. Make sure when you're buying on Amazon, make sure you find some of these tools that have 5% off when you click this or a coupon, you know, and then buying from companies like Tekton, you get rewards. So that's very important. Now, like I said at the beginning, we had to go with the pneumatic air tools just to stay within budget. If you did want to go cordless, I mean, you can add and remove things on this list to try and make up for that, but most likely you're not gonna be able to stick within budget, so you might have to start an OnlyFans. I don't know, I, I don't suggest it, but that is an option. But what I'm trying to say is be smart, be patient, just gain experience, do the job, earn yourself some money, and grow from there. Here, I'm gonna list really quickly just some of the other things that you might wanna keep in mind for future purposes you might want to expand on your wrenches ratchets half inch chrome if you would like or 3 8 impact electrical tools scan tools coolant and brake tools or cordless tools specialty tools and some organizers now obviously when you get to this point you're not going to be fitting inside that five drawer <laughs> uh, tool cart so you might have to step up to a larger toolbox Maybe still keep the tool cart for mobile work around the shop. But other than that, that's all I have for you guys, and I really hope you guys enjoyed. If I forgot to mention anything basic that you guys believe should be on the list, go ahead, drop it down in the comments. And if you guys enjoyed, hit that thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Thanks again, Justin Dow, for the opportunity to create this video, and I look forward to seeing everybody else's video. See you guys next time.